At the start of her monologue as the headliner of the White House Correspondents Association dinner, Michelle Wolf, a comedian neither myself nor anyone on my staff had ever heard of, made plain the direction she was headed in. Good evening. Here we are, the White House Correspondents Dinner. Like a porn star says when she's about to have sex with a Trump, let's get this over with. <laughs> yep, kiddos, this is who you're getting tonight. At least she had a really good voice. Well, they got much more of it, though the president wasn't in attendance. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Kellyanne Conway, and others from the White House were at the dinner. This was sold, by the way, as an evening to celebrate the First Amendment. That's nice. But of all the comedians the Correspondents Association could have hired, they turned to the obscure Michelle Wolf. Aunt Lydia. The Trump pink yarn sales are through the roof. After Trump got elected, women started knitting those hats. When I first saw them, I was like, that's a I guess mine just has a lot more yarn on it. Yeah. Should have done more research before you got me to do this. Mm -hmm. That's an understatement. Well, the choice of an aspirational comedian like Wolf, with one HBO special, I guess, and a few writing gigs to her credit, tells us a lot about the Correspondents Association. Because some of those who cover the White House, let's face it, we know it, are brimming with hatred of this president and all that he represents. Let's face it, he embarrassed them with his electoral victory, and he continues to prove them wrong day after day. And he ends up revealing them for who they really are. And I have to say, guys, when you see, when you see the faces of the crowd at the correspondence dinner, when they were like cutting away from the C-SPAN coverage, it was like, I was thinking, wait a second, can we just have a full screen and freeze it there? Because we need to see the exact, no, no, we need to see the exact facial expressions on the reporters who were laughing at the particular times which we're about to highlight. And they comp when you compare what she was saying to what happened when the president was speaking in Michigan, wow. By the way, is this better than that phony Washington White House correspondence? Center? Is this more fun? I could be up there tonight smiling like I love where they're hitting you shot after shot. These people, they hate your guts. Well, for this and other statements like it, the press will forever despise Trump. And unlike other Republican presidents who ran to the nearest corner and crouched or even apologized when the media attacked, what does Trump do? He returns fire. By choosing Wolf as their avatar, the D.C. media elites have confirmed their bias for anyone who wanted to give them even the slightest benefit of the doubt. And boy, was I glad my kids and I weren't watching. I know people really want me to go after Trump tonight, but I think we should give the president credit when he deserves it. Like, he pulled out of the Paris Agreement. And I think he should get credit for that, because he said he was going to pull out, and then he did, and that's a refreshing quality in a man. When people say romance is dead. Mike Pence is what happens when Anderson Cooper isn't gay. <laughs> Mike Pence is also very anti-choice. He thinks abortion is murder, which, first of all, don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> and when you do try it, really knock it. You know, you got to get that baby out of there tasteless, aggressively unfunny. And it was frankly sad for her. I thought about that a while after I was disgusted. And it, of course, it was insulting to half the country who believes in protecting innocent life. The Debbie Wasserman Schultz doppelganger, in between dropping F-bombs, attacked Sarah Huckabee Sanders' looks, who, of course, was seated at the head table with her. I actually really like Sarah. I think she's very resourceful. Like, she burns facts, and then she uses that ash to create a perfect smoky eye. Now, imagine if this were someone, let's say, a few years back attacking Susan Rice or Valerie Jarrett or Samantha Powers 
or any adult child of a Democratic president. The fact that no one heckled her, that's like a, in the tradition of great comedy, heckling back, and that so few walked out during Wolf's 20-minute rant is frankly astounding. This after the Me Too movement? Conservatives and even some reasonable liberals, we got to give it to them, were stunned by the audacity of what they saw. When Sarah Huckabee Sanders was being made fun of, I, I, everybody felt pain for her. She felt pain, and it really bothered me. If you say, well, this year we want a tone of civility, and we want to try and lower the temperature because the, uh, you know, nation's being ripped asunder, and let's try and do it a little differently tonight, you've got to add that conversation. The idea is to have a truce and let it go, but the remarks went way over the line. I think everyone agrees to that. Now, Michelle Wolf herself finally responded to the controversy on NPR today. I'm honestly, I wouldn't change a single word that I said. I'm very happy with what I said. Um, and I'm glad I stuck to my guns. Of course she's happy, because she's just another warrior princess in the resistance. The White House Correspondents Association issued this lame statement amid the wolf fallout. Last night's program was meant to offer a unifying message about our common commitment to a vigorous and free press. And while honoring civility, great reporting, and scholarship winners, not to divide people. Unfortunately, the entertainer's monologue was not in the spirit of that mission. Civility? A celebration of the free press? The White House Correspondents Association has failed on both counts. Had a conservative said the things that Wolf said, about a Democratic administration, they would be roadkill by now. They'd never work again. White House Correspondents President Margaret Taleb sought to defuse the Wolf controversy over the weekend. I hope that everyone can remember that comedy is meant to be provocative, and it doesn't always hit the mark, and sometimes it hits the mark for some people and not for other people. Well, provocative, sure, but not a verbal assault. That would never be tolerated if not directed at conservatives. You want to know provocative? Don Rickles, Mr. Warmth, at Reagan's second inaugural. Good evening, Mr. President. Nice to see you, sir, and your lovely wife, Nancy. It's, it's a big treat for me to fly all the way from California to be here for this kind of money. <laughs> and Billy Graham, nice to see you, sir. <laughs> This hand is bothering me. Is this too fast, Ronnie? Anyway, uh, he's sitting there looking at the program going, where does he say he makes fun of me? Where does it say that? It's only a joke, Mrs. Reagan. <laughs> they got real guns. Cutting, but really fun. Oh, my gosh, do we miss him. Rickles, Rickles is a comedian who knew how to push boundaries without crossing them. Now, compare that to Ms. Wolf. Which, of course, brings me to the Me Too movement. It's probably the reason I'm here. They were like, a woman's probably not going <laughs> to in front of anyone, right? And to that, I say, don't count your chickens. AP reporter Meg Kennard captured it best when she wrote on Twitter, if the WHCD dinner did anything tonight, it made the chasm between journalists and those who don't trust us even wider. And those of us based in the red states who work hard every day to prove our objectivity will have to deal with it. This revealing episode has shown the American people the hateful intolerance of the press corps and those we trust to cover the news. Kennard is right. It'll take a long time to prove their objectivity after this heinous display. And the fact that the Correspondents Association is now talking about reformatting their dinner rather than just doing what they need to do, which is soul searching about bias and the fact that it exists, just demonstrates the problem anew. A filthy comedian and a tainted dinner are symptoms of a deeper issue. Animus. Animus against tradition, against conservatism, against this president. That is the thing that taints their coverage of this president and all our news on a daily basis. And that's the angle.